It's sometimes strange to me that I've ended up writing the music I have. I started out as a self-taught rock and roll guitarist. Sometimes I feel like nothing has really changed since those days, and then sometimes I think, okay, maybe that's not completely true. But back when I was a teenager, I had an experience which I've basically spent 40 or so years trying to recreate. I climbed up here with a group of friends. This is Cleve Hill in Gloucestershire. It was before dawn, with the first light creeping in at the horizon. Later on, I was walking back alone, and I became acutely aware of the bird song. I was struck not only by its extraordinary beauty, but by the fact that each bird had its own individual song, which formed a part of the whole chorus. And as I walked, so one song became louder, another became quieter. It was a music that was very different to the rock music I listened to, which typically had a single melody line, an accompaniment, and a defined rhythm. This music entirely surrounded me, and I could choose my own path through it, and every part was beautiful and unique. I was strongly drawn to the idea of making music that was, in some way, more like the birds at dawn. Music that surrounded you, and that you could choose to walk through. This led me to make sketches like this. I would sit in the woods and write these scores, trying to imagine the sounds in my head. Instead of having the instruments as you'd normally have them at the vertical axis, I had distance. This one covers about 200 feet. And instead of using metered bars, I simply put time along the horizontal. I would then draw a wiggly line diagonally across the score, and this represented the path of someone walking through the space over time. So, for example, the line might show me that maybe a celeste might sound, say, 70 feet to that person's left, or a trumpet might sound 150 feet to their left and then be echoed by a second trumpet 50 feet to their right. Of course, each person's journey would be different, but this just helped me to think about what the experience of the piece might be. With this sketch, I could then create a more conventional score that regular Western musicians could actually understand, like this one here from a piece called Manaz. Manaz uses 72 independent, simultaneous melody lines. These slowly evolve into a single melody. They all have to be recorded separately, and then they're combined on a mixing page that looks like this. This page has 72 independent audio outputs. It looks very different from the starting sketch, but in fact, it still uses a map of distance on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Manas has been written and recorded for Descanso Gardens in Los Angeles. I took this footage there in 2018. I'm walking around figuring out the best locations for 72 audio speakers and also thinking about what sounds are going to be best suited for the location. After a few days on site, I scribble this map, which, with help from people who are better at making maps than me, becomes these maps. When it came to thinking about what the music should be, I always liked what the artist Andy Goldsworthy said. He talked about participating with nature. So, for example, with manners, I transcribed the songs and sounds of birds for Western choral singers, and then gradually developed those transcriptions into a single unified piece. For example, here's a blackbird I recorded in 2012. I used this fragment of birdsong as a motif. You can see it here at the beginning of the score. 
and later on you can see how that motif is sung back and forth between the 72 voices. Those 72 voices will be spread out over 72 speakers, distributed according to the map. This brings me back to where we began, with me sitting in a studio wondering, how did I get here? The answer is that I got here over a 40 year journey that happily continues to this day. This is a very unconventional way of making music, but I've found it a very enjoyable one. For me, these works celebrate nature and help us to understand ourselves as a part of it, not just as separate observers. I like that you don't need to put on a headset or download an app. To experience these pieces, all you need to do is go for a walk in the woods.